The following instructions are in operation sequence. First, check oil. Hydraulic oil should always be visible in the oil level sight glass on the side of the hydraulic oil reservoir. If air or foam is visible in the oil, tighten fittings or replace as necessary. Then, pre-filling. Close all drains. They are located as follows. A drain cock on each of two water control valves, one 3 8 inch drain valve on the water pump, and one drain cock on the bottom of the pressure transfer diaphragm located at the rear center of the discharge head. Do not remove the hex plug located at the top of the diaphragm. There is one drain cock on the bottom of each of the two inch pipe elbows in the flushing water line below the water control valve. On units equipped with a rear hose reel, close the one and a half inch ball line valve in the inlet elbow to the hose reel. Fill the tank with water from a hydrant using a filling hose equipped with connectors that will accept both the tank and hydrant threads. A two and a half inch by 16 foot fill hose equipped with a coupling to fit the tank connection is provided as standard equipment. The amber full lamp on the rear of the tank will light when the tank is approximately 95% full. The overflow pipe will carry off the water when the tank is completely full. The full lamp will remain lit until the water level drops below the 95% full mark. Do not fill through the manhole. Filling should only be done through the fill line. The manhole is designed for inspection and maintenance only. At the control panel inside the cab, engage the PTO. This will begin operation of the hydraulic pump. Turn on the power switch on the control panel. The amber system power pilot light will now be on and the water pressure in the discharge head will increase to the predetermined pressure. With the hydrostatic pump operating at 15 to 1800 RPM, press the system start button. This is a momentary contact switch. The green system start pilot light will come on at the time the system start button is closed. At this time, the system start button may be released. The amber pilot light will go out, the green pilot light will remain lit, and the predetermined pressure gauge and the operating system pressure gauge should read the same. Select the desired flushing pressure using the discharge pressure selection valve located on the right hand side of the control panel. Rotate the knob clockwise to increase until the desired pressure is obtained. Rotating the knob counterclockwise will decrease pressure. The valve is equipped with a locking nut. Be sure the locking nut is released before adjusting pressure. The pressure is read on the predetermined operating pressure gauge located on the control panel. Water pressure is now available for flushing. Either turn on the master spray switch and select each nozzle switch as desired, or pre-select the nozzles to be used and then turn on the master spray switch. When using the master spray switch, all the nozzles selected will operate at the same time. Please note that during the flushing operation, additional nozzles may be turned on or any nozzles already in service may be turned off and the system will automatically maintain the predetermined pressure. If your unit is equipped with an auxiliary spray bar and sprinkler nozzle, pressure selection for the bar or sprinkler is accomplished in the same manner as it is for the flushing nozzles. The bar or sprinkler operation is selected with the auxiliary switches on the control panel and the master spray switch must be on.
When the red low water warning light is activated, it indicates that there is only a short period remaining before the pressure system dropout occurs. When system dropout does occur, the green pilot light will go out and the amber pilot light will relight. The tank will have to be refilled for further operation. The unit is equipped with a tank type oil cooler and the red hydraulic oil overheat pilot light should never be lit. If the red light does come on, shut down the system immediately to prevent damage to the hydraulic components. Refer to the maintenance section of the Operation, Maintenance, Parts, and Safety Manual supplied with your unit.